today's message, I actually put it on the live stream, it says, the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. But my message is called, because this is for me, I preach to me also, not just to you. Lord, sometimes it feels like you have forsaken me. Sometimes it feels like that. We read in the Bible that Jesus said, why have you forsaken me? But do you think that God the Father left Jesus? No. That was just how he felt. That's why I said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Because he felt alone, but he was never alone. I don't know if any of you have seen The Shack, the movie The Shack. That's homework for the rest of the people. You will not be allowed back in the church if you have not done your homework. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. It's very good homework. Just take your tissues with. But it's the most amazing movie for us to understand God. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And also to understand when Jesus was on the cross, he was not alone. And if he was not alone, we are never alone. Okay, so my first scripture, Deuteronomy 20, uh, 31, verse 6 and verse 8. Thirty one verse six and verse eight. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay. Now you don't have to put up your hands, but since two thousand and twelve, okay? Just quickly think now, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16. Who has had the best years of their life? Okay. So I'm not the only one. And then 2017 started and I thought, Lord, this is going to be the year. And guess what? We're in May and it's not the year yet. But you know what? I attended a, a sermon about at the beginning of the year, end of last year, and I really didn't like this preacher much. I won't say his name. But he said one thing that really hit my spirit. He said, in the beginning of each year, all the preachers stand in front and they prophesy and they tell the people, this is the year of whatever, or this is the year of this. And, and he said, you know what? I've got a surprise for you. God doesn't think in years. He said to me that day, he said, if you think about where you wanted to be 10 years ago, that is where you are today. So he said, we must stop thinking in this year. Whatever we do today, we will have in 10 years. So whatever negative things you are thinking, I'm not going to make it, I'm not, that's what you're going to have. But we have an op option today to say, Lord, I'm going to change my, my vision. I'm going to change... Because what I want to speak about today is also how we see God. Because that is our big problem. So next time when you feel that this is not your year, just hang on. There's only a few years left and 10 years is done. Okay. So, we feel that God has forsaken us because the first one is because we look at other people. Okay. On Thursday night, it was so funny, we were at Bible study and we were talking about all our trials and tribulations, whatever, the few people that was here. And Ilani said, but you guys all look perfect. And that's the problem. We look at other people and we think, but they don't look at their car. They don't have any issues. Or look how nice they are dressed. Or they always look happy. They don't have any issues. But are you sure? We all go through tough times. We all have something that's, that's not working out or somewhere where we made a mistake that we need to sort out. And the other thing also that I want to say to you, people are not always honest. My um, twin sister, she's been married now for three years and they, they want a baby. And um, she said to me, and the one lady actually, she was so shocked because the one lady said to her, she says, I love my kids, but if I could have my life over, it's very difficult to have kids. And she couldn't believe that this lady said it about 
I said, but that's somebody that's actually being honest. Because being a mom has all the benefits, but there's also things that is tough. And you can't always just think about yourself. You have to think about your child. So people are not always honest. Then the second thing why we feel that God sometimes leaves us or we feel that he's not with us is because we look at ourselves through a wrong mirror. In other words, the, Bible's, the Bible should actually be our mirror. Because when we look at the Bible, God says in that Bible that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So if I see that about myself, um, Lemuel said it the one day that if you do not love yourself, the Bible says love your, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, on a scale to 1 to 10, if I only love myself 2, how much can I love my neighbor? 2. Because that's the capacity that I have. And the moment that we start seeing ourselves through God's eyes, I prayed the one night for Johan at prayer. I said, I pray that you get a new mirror. And he was frowning at me. What do you mean? I said, no, a mirror, when, when you look at that mirror, that you see what God sees. Not what the TV, the TV or the magazine says, I'm supposed to look like this, or I'm supposed to be this successful, or we look, we look and then we see it, but I'm already in my 40s and I haven't achieved this and this, but that we will see what God sees, not what, what we see. And then Psalm 119 verse 105, 119 verse 105, that our mirror will be the word of God. And it says here, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the moment that we use God's word as a lamp, then we won't stumble. And when we use that lamp to see ourselves as God sees us, that will also help us. And then sometimes when we go through difficult times, or I don't know about you, the other day I actually said to God, Lord, I don't want to go home, but is there a pause button on life? I just want to push pause and just rest a while, please. And sometimes when we go through stuff, we think that this is going to be our life. But then we must remember that we are being changed from glory to glory. And we are not going to be stuck here. Because sometimes when we feel that this is going to be my life, the one challenge, this thing, this thing, then we stop dreaming and we stop hoping. And then I, I reminded myself that God says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, He says, He has plans for me. And He has a future for me. So if I start looking at everything that's around me, then I'm going to lose my focus of what He has for me. Then, can you, the second slide, thanks. There's the problem in real life versus the problem in my head. Cause some, but you know what? It's also not wrong to feel that things are hectic, or to feel that you are so overwhelmed. But then we have to stand on God's word and remember his promises. We'll get to the rest now. Then 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 to 18. For this light momentarily a fiction, the slight distress of the passing hour. Now sometimes when you're in a trial, it doesn't feel like it's so, so slight. Is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory, beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparison and all calculation, a vast transcendent glory, and blessedness never to cease. Who wants that? Blessedness to never cease. That's in the Amplified. I just want to read you the New King James. It says, It is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things which are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, 
but the things that are unseen, that is eternal. Because sometimes we get stuck in, in this, in what we see, but then we have to hold on to, to God. Then the second slide, after the next slide, they in the same boat, but the one just sees every day is a choice. I say to people sometimes, like the guy on this side, what's stopping him to go sit on the other side? Sometimes we are stuck in a job or we're in a situation and we keep on complaining about it, but what's stopping us to trust God to give us a new job? Or to give us a new school? Or to give us new staff members? Or whatever it is. Then we blame God for everything. This movie, The Shack, um, it was so amazing because at a stage God said to the guy, but you see the biggest problem is that the way that you think I am. Because we build our picture of God. I was thinking of it in this week. We, we grow up and our parents teach us the little that they know. I don't know, my, my parents were not saved or reborn when I was growing up, so they taught me all the religious, you must just remember God's going to punish you and all those things. And we build our picture about God based on their little knowledge. And then when stuff goes wrong in our life, that's the first person that we blame is God. And I always say to people, your relationship your relationship with God must be built on two things. God is good and it cannot be his fault. It cannot be his fault. We, we make choices in our lives and I, what I say to people is, yes, it might be your parents' fault, some things in your life, but then we must come to a point where we can forgive them so that we can move on. We have to forgive and move on. See, the other day... Um, about a year ago, maybe two years ago, this one lady came to me and she said to me, um, her friend had a baby. They've, they've been waiting to have full pregnant for about four or five years. Um, and the baby was born and the baby died a day later. And why did God do this? And she's a, she's a uh, reborn, spiritual Christian, this lady that asked me. And, um, sorry, it was about three years ago, actually. And in the last, I said to her, you know what, we don't always understand everything. But in the last three years, even when you handed the sermon now about your body, soul, and spirit. Now, the first thing that they did is they blamed God. But now I'm asking a, a natural question. That mom, I'm not saying this is the case, I'm just saying in general. That mom, what did she eat while she was pregnant? What medicine did she take? Did God give it to her or did she take it? Was she smoking? Was she drinking? But now we have this baby that died and the first person that we blame is God. And not even just that. The Bible says whatever you say, you will have. How do we know that that lady, since she was small or maybe in a teen, she said, you know what, I, I know one day I'm going to have problems when I'm pregnant or there's something. How do we know? But then, then the first person that we blame is God. How fair is that? And you know what I realized in this movie also is that even if we are in that place today where we blame God for everything, if we allow him to show us the truth, he, he still loves us even though we question him today. Because you know why? Because he can't help it. God can't help it to love us. He really can't. We were walking in, in clear water one day and Kaylee said to me, Mom, thank you for loving me so much. And I said, you know what? I can't help it. And that's how God feels about us, even though we question him, even if we don't understand today. But like that song said, Lord, I surrender. Because the moment that we surrender, 
we can, God can start showing us the truth. And then sometimes we think that God is punishing us. Now the most practical thing that I saw this week, last week, our one cat um, has a growth on, on his paw and we had to put on the cone of shame. Have you seen those cats and dogs with this cone on their head so that they can't lick wherever they're not supposed to? And I was thinking, but that's what God sometimes does to us. He restricts us so that we don't hurt ourselves. But the moment that we feel restricted, we start making plans to get out of this because this is uncomfortable. But the more we trust God, the more we will know that he has our best interest at heart. And that's the thing. The moment that you settle in your heart that God is good, it doesn't matter what you go through, it doesn't matter if you go to your office tomorrow morning and you get the worst news ever, if you've settled in your heart that God is good, then everything will be okay. Then Hebrews 6 verse 12. Hebrews 6 verse 12. Now it says, But imitate those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. Not promise, the promises. Because sometimes we say, we have to have more faith, we have to have more faith. But there it says, through faith and patience. Because we want everything yesterday. I said to somebody, when you, in a lifespan, let's say you're 35, and you've picked up 110 kilos, now suddenly you decide, I want to lose weight. And now it takes longer than six weeks and you get discouraged. Really? It took you 35 years to get here, so I'm not saying it's going to take you 35 years to get out of it, but we have to be patient. And if we keep on um, trusting God, and, and we, if we put God in everything that we do, even losing weight, have you thought about that? If you, if you involve Holy Spirit in everything that you do, how much easier and quicker will it be? then we expect God to do big things, but we won't do the small things. We want God to do something major, but we're not willing to do something minor. Now, this is not condemnation. How many of you, but don't put up your hand, you can just... How many of you sometimes in the week feel that you need answers to something, or that you don't understand something, or that you read something in the Bible and it doesn't make sense and you're actually more upset with God because how can he say this in his word? And once again, we put this as an invitation. We have Tuesday night prayer and Thursday night Bible study. We come every week because we need it. We don't come because we want to teach you. We come because I need prayer. The thing is that People say, yes, but I'm busy and I've got this and I've got this. But if you say to God, Lord, I just want to go, even if I go once a month, once a month, on a Tuesday or a Thursday, then people say to me, no, but I'm not coming to your stuff in the week because I'm listening to three sermons every day and whatever. You know? Okay, that's great, but... We don't always just come to pray so that somebody can pray for me or that I can listen to a sermon on Thursday night or Bible study. But it's also to give. Because isn't our job to equip you so that you can go out and pray for other people so that when you get to the office and somebody says, but I read this last night, I don't understand. I know we discussed this at, at Bible study. This is how it works. Because you also need to develop your gifts. That's why I come to pray, because I want to develop my prophetic gift. I come to Bible study because, um, I mean, like um, Thursday night, um, Johan, not my husband, the other Johan, he said something so profound. And I, I actually, I got something that in my spirit that I can, can build something on. 
And that's why we want the big things from God, but I'm just saying once a month to offer up an hour or an hour and a half, isn't that something that's possible? That we can, that we can grow from that? Then the next thing, what is in our hearts? You see, I always say to people, when you come to God, it might, be, it might have been 20 years ago, it might be 10 years or 5 years ago, the, the easy stuff, the outside stuff falls off. The drinking, the smoking, the, the, the outside stuff. But the thing is, then God starts working with your heart. And that's why I say to people in this church, you'll see people come for a while and they're very excited and they're so excited and all everything and God is so wonderful. And I actually call it a T-junction because they hit the T-junction. And then they're either going to go left and they're going to run because they, they can't deal with this, what's on the inside, or they're going to go right and they're going to allow God to, to heal them. That's what's in our hearts. We were talking on Thursday night and we were talking about you've been believing God for five years for a new car and this Sunday you come to church and yes, Stephanie, and somebody just blessed her with a brand new car. See, because then your heart will be exposed because will I say, wow, Steph, I'm so happy for you. I hope that you're blessed with your new car. Am I going to say, you see, I've been praying for five years and where's my cop? So the, the, the stuff that's in our heart, God wants to heal. He wants us to know that we can also be blessed. And then the next one is because we are not free. That's why we sometimes feel that God has left us. The one thing that God showed me is that these people, when I do my marriage sermon, I always show you the clay where you have yellow clay and blue clay and the Bible says the two becomes one. So when we take the two clays and we mix it, it becomes green. And God showed me that some people feel far from God because they're still attached, it, they've gone through a divorce and they're still attached to their spouse. So please, if you feel like that, um, please come, let us pray for you because we have to be free. We have to be free from our past. That was just something that God showed me in the week about people that, that's gone through a divorce. Then the next one is that there's still Jonah's in our lives. We have people in our lives that, that we, like Johan always says, our, our compassion overrides our clear thinking. Or our compassion overrides God's word. Because we are not Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. I cannot be Jesus for you. If God says help this person or take this person into your house for two months or whatever or whatever it might be, then it's fine. But my priority is my household, my husband and my kids. I cannot help somebody else and then neglect my family. Or I cannot give money to somebody because, because I feel sorry for them and then I don't have money for my kids. So we have to be sure that God's instruction we follow, but not when we think it's a good idea. And then the next slide. You make mistakes, but mistakes don't make you. We sometimes make mistakes, and then there's a time where we can say, okay, I need to reevaluate, but there should be a time when you get over that mistake where you allow God to bring healing so that you can con continue with your life, that you can fulfill your purpose and your destiny. But if we wake up every morning and say, you know what, 15 years ago I should never have gone into this business or I should never have done this, what is the point? Like I said earlier, God works in 10 years. The more you get up every morning and you still focus on that, you are prolonging that 10 years. So it's time for us to say, you know what? Yes, I made a lot of mistakes. But Lord, I'm trusting you to bring healing to my past so that I can have a blessed future. And then the next one is the glass with the half 
full water. I'm not talking about the, are you seeing the positive or the negative. God shows me that you have this glass of water that you've been carrying for the last 40 years. How heavy does that get? So it's time for us to let go of the past. It's time for us to bless the people that we need to bless, to forgive the people that we need to forgive. Even in this movie, forgiveness is not this, I'm going to, somebody did something and I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to feel free that instant and whatever. No, you might still be angry. You might still be hurt. But to forgive them is to release them and to bless them so that you can continue. If you think about it, God says, He forgives me because He forgives me. So I can forgive somebody else. Don't you sometimes need forgiveness? Do you always do everything perfectly and you never mess up? No, you also need forgiveness sometimes. So whatever you sow, you will reap.